Hey everyone, good morning. My name is Pranjal Mishra and today I would be taking talking something on the Pandas. So Pandas is a very powerful library for data frames uh, and data frames are very important when it comes to machine learning. Why? Because whenever we want to create any algorithm, be it a supervised algorithm or an unsupervised algorithm, our data has to be in data frame format. So till the time we have converted our data into data frame format, our machine learning algorithm cannot be created on our data. And even when we have created our data frame, we need to do a lot of manipulation data, cleaning data preparation on it. So we'll see, we'll start from the very basic how to create a simple data frame and then how to read our external data file and clean and prepare our data. So let's start with creating the simple data frame. So I'm taking an example where I want to create a data frame with uh, with name and age. So I am saying name and I'm taking a name of some employees, Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C. So let's say these are my three employees and I have their age. Age can be any number, so let's say 20, 21, 22. So 20 is the age of Mr. A, 21 for B, and 22 for C. It's one to one mapping. I want to create a data frame with, an, with some name. So let's say employee detail. So employee detail. In this, I'll pass my name and age. So name and age would be created to create this data frame. So for creating a data frame, first I'll convert this into a dictionary. So I'll pd dot data frame. In pd dot data frame, I'll create a dictionary. I'll say name. So this name, which it's inside the code, will act as your name of the column. So this name, I can take anything. So I can say name one and colon name, comma h1 colon h and my data frame has been created now if you want we can print our data frame or we can see our data frame and we see that our data frame has been created check the type of this so this use your type function it tells you pandas code data frame so my data frame has been created what if you uh, you want to add another column to your existing data frame so I want to add a salary detail also. I create a salary. So 100, 101, 103, any number. I want it to add it to my existing data frame. Uh, name of my existing data frame is employee detail. I'll see that another column has been added. But the problem here is the name of the column is not coming proper. So if you want to avoid this problem, we can use another way to add a column. So the another way to add the column would be something like this. So employee detail is the name of my existing column and I say salary or whatever name you wish to add, I say salary equal to salary. And now when I check, now when I, when I check my existing data frame, we will see that the column name has been added properly. So this is how I can add a column to my existing data frame. We can also add a column in exist uh, column in a data frame, even by creating a. So I, I can also add but even by creating a empty data frame. So let's let me create an empty data frame. Df1 is equal to pd dot data frame dot data frame so this df1 is your empty data frame it's a pure empty data frame if you want you can check that df1 so in this data frame i want to add something so this data frame i want to add my name so i say name equal to name then i want to add age equal to age i want to add salary 
which is equal to your salary and now my job is done so now if i see i have added my name age and salary so we have seen three ways to create our data frame using our concat app another way is i can say pd.concat another way is at first i create a empty data frame and in empty data frame i keep on adding the name of the columns but in many key scenarios or in, i'll say in most of the scenarios we need to fetch a data frame which already exists so we'll read an external data frame so for that we can use our pd dot read underscore csv command pd dot read underscore csv so based upon your type of the file so if it's a csv file i'll say pd dot read underscore csv or if it's an excel file i can say dot excel depending upon the type of the file so let me take one uh, uh, first of all we need to give the path so this is the path where my file exists credit risk is the name of my file and dot csv is my format and this r indicates that i am reading it in raw format so this r is not mandatory but sometimes it's better to add r so that we do not get any error so now if i just run this my file has been read so what is the cr this cr is the name of or a variable in which this particular file has been loaded so i can quickly check if i just say cr and i this thing so i can see whole of my file being loaded but this printing cr is not a good way if we want to get familiar with our data so i'll say cr dot head so as the name head suggests it will give me the top five rows but instead of if you want just want to see your top first row you can say cr dot head one it will give you the first row if you want to see your top 10 rows you can give cr dot head 10 it gives you the top 10 rows similarly i can say cr dot tail and if i do not pass any parameter it will give me last and last five records gives me last five records similarly if i say la so it gives me last 10 records okay now cr dot describe so this basically describes the my data or it gives me the information about each and every column about all the columns A careful look at this describe or at, of the output of the describe will tell us that it's showing me a description of only those columns which are numeric in nature. For example, it's not giving me the description of the gender column. It's not giving me the description of a married column. So this CR dot describe helps to know which column are numeric, which column are categorical. So the another flavor which we can use in cr.describe is or rather for any function if you want to see the extra features that function is giving in the this put your cursor over here where my cursor is and just press your shift tab so this small window opens and you can say plus so i can see include equal to none this is my default option so what I'll say include equal to all. So as soon as I say include equal to all, it gives me the description of all the columns, irrespective whether they are numeric column or the non-numeric columns. And looking at this output is very important because it gives us a lot of information. For example, this gives, so if I take a, a column gender, so it's giving me the count. 957 count and one more thing so let's run a shape function on this so the shape function tells me number of rows and columns so 981 rows and 13 columns but in gender i just see 957 so it means there are few nulls so 981 minus 957 are your nulls it says two unique so it means there are two 
levels which your gender is taking and that we can see as your male and female so if i just put it as and i can see that let's take your male and female similarly for married so there are 978 values it means there are three null values and in married we can see that it's either no or yes so this two indicates or any number indicates this unique value indicates the how many levels your categorical column is having for example if i take this uh, another column so property area i can see three so because there are three levels in property area urban ruler and semi urban another thing we are seeing lot of nan values over here so whichever column is the numeric column i will see nan for unique for your top and for your frequency because when it's a numeric and continuous i cannot find the unique values i cannot found the top values but whichever column is numeric and continuous i will see mean for them for example let's take applicant income so applicant income is a numeric and continuous data so i can find the mean for that column i can find the standard deviation i can find the minimum i can find the 25th percentile so on and so forth so for numeric column i will have nan for unique top and frequency and for non numeric columns i will have nans for mean standard deviation minimum and all and the other respective variable so this gives a brief idea which columns are numeric and cr dot columns it gives me the name of the columns so which how many columns we have we'll get the names of each and every column cr dot info so cr dot info gives me the information of the data type for each and every column so for example uh, your dependent is a numeric column and it's having the float 64 value your married is a non numeric column it's a object similarly your co-applicant income is your numeric float 64 let's select this so in this line so here i am saying categorical column cr dot select data type so cr is the name of my data frame dot select d types include object columns so this will create so this variable would be having the list of all the categorical columns so if you have a bigger data frame and you want to select all the categorical columns i'll say select d types include objects select all the numeric columns then the things. so it selects me all the numeric columns condition so if you want to from this bigger data frame if you want to select some few record based upon your filter condition for example let's take a, a scenario where i want to do something on the people who are earning more than a particular amount so let's say people who are earning uh, people are earning more than $4,000 or applicant when the applicant income is more than $4,000. So what I can say is uh, $4,000, I say CR, applicant income equal to $4,000. So basically this AA is just a variable name or I can say a filter. It's, it's acting like a filter condition setting like a filter condition filter condition is equal to this now if i check this filter condition what i get true false true false so for for each row i'll get either true or false so remember we had 981 rows so same thing since the indexing is starting from zero we are going till 980 and we can see that we are getting either true or false so wherever this condition is met applicant income is more than 4000 i get as true otherwise i get as false now the only thing only thing we need to do is we need to filter out all the true so how do we do that i want to create a data frame from the existing data frame name of my existing data frame is cr i use my square bracket and i say 
filter condition test. So now if you see only those people whose applicant income is more than 4000 we have created. So this is how, uh, so in this video we have seen uh, how to basically create a data frame from the, uh, from the uh, variables which we have from the list, how to create a data frame from our empty data frame, how to add a column to a data frame and then later on we have seen how to read our external CSV file and how to get familiar with our data. So we got familiar with our data using our head function, tail function, describe info. So in another video, we'll continue from the same, same thing. We'll try to rename our column, try to deal with our null values and other things. So uh, that's it for this video. Hope to see you in the next video. Thank you everyone.